Good evening. I'm Leland Vittert. On the program tonight, the January 6th committee finally provides new evidence, but will it change any minds? The rich and powerful breathe a sigh of relief as Jeffrey Epstein's madam will now spend 20 years behind bars. Why the left singles out Clarence Thomas for scorn and hatred. What makes him such an appealing target to America's elite? Plus, new evidence that the Navy won't tell us what their sailors really saw off the coast of San Diego and how the UFOs you see here evaded America's best anti-drone technology. But first, on point tonight, for the first time, the January 6th committee delivered as promised. They called an emergency hearing, the bar was high, and they delivered explosive details. By way of saying, the testimony you will hear is, taken at face value, stunning, although maybe not entirely surprising. Whether it's true, whether it will change voters' minds, whether there is proof of anything we didn't already know or assume, well, the committee did not deliver that. Their star witness today was Cassidy Hutchinson, who worked for then chief of staff in the Trump White House, Mark Meadows. I left the office and went down to the dining room and I noticed that the door was propped open and the valet was inside the dining room changing the tablecloth off of the dining room table. There was ketchup dripping down the wall and there was a shattered porcelain plate on the floor. The valet had articulated that the president was extremely angry at the attorney general's AP interview and had thrown his lunch against the wall. Certainly salacious, certainly bad manners, but not exactly a crime, not exactly something that you call an emergency hearing for. In the end, after hearing the story, you probably feel bad for the valet stuck cleaning up the ketchup, but that wasn't what we were here for. Here is Ms. Hutchinson describing a story told to her by then head of Oval Office Operations. This is on January 6th, right after Mr. Trump's speech to that huge crowd before the Capitol riot. The story is being told about the president's lead Secret Service agent just after the president talked to the crowd on January 6th. The president said something to the effect of, I'm the effing president, take me up to the Capitol now. To which Bobby responded, sir, we have to go back to the West Wing. The president reached up towards the front of the vehicle to grab at the steering wheel. Mr. Engel grabbed his arm, said, sir, you need to take your hand off the steering wheel. We're going back to the West Wing. We're not going to the Capitol. Mr. Trump then used his free hand to lunge towards Bobby Engel. And Mr. when Mr. Renato had recounted this story to me, he had motion towards his clavicles. When Mr. Ornato had recounted the story to me, so she didn't see any of this happen. As we said, it's important if true, and it would be understandable to have a hearsay witness if we didn't know or have any way of finding out the truth. What's curious is the lengths the committee went to to conceal if it's true or not. They have the testimony of Robert Engel, the Secret Service agent, in Hutchinson's story. They've interviewed him. He reportedly cooperated with the investigation. The Secret Service recently put out a number of statements saying that they and their employees and agents have fully cooperated. But the committee has not released those depositions. Here's Jake Tapper of CNN asking a member of the committee about just that fact. Do you have any corroborating evidence? The story that she told is the evidence that I'm aware of. Your committee interviewed Tony Amato and, and Stephen Engel who supposedly told her this story. Did you ask about this story? I, I was not involved in either of those interviews. I'm not aware of anything that contradicts the account that she just gave. So where is the follow-up? Republicans were already calling this hearsay. Where is Jake Tapper? Since you have first-hand accounts, why aren't you releasing them? It is journalistic malpractice not to continue hammering home on that issue. Why is the January 6th committee playing hide the ball? There are two possible explanations for what you just saw right there. Either Engel's story 
that you heard from the committee is a little bit different and less explosive than Hutchinson's because Engel was in the car, or the January 6th committee is trying to build suspense for the next episode. Either of those is bad. Plus, there are issues with the car story. The Beast, AKA the presidential limo, isn't your parents' Cadillac in which grabbing the wheel would be difficult in The Beast because of how the car is laid out in the partitions. But that day, President Trump was in the up-armored Suburban for the short trip from the Ellipse to the White House. So who really knows what happens except the people in the car, the driver of the car and the Secret Service agent, Engel. But the committee won't let us hear from the people who were there. As we said, all of this is important if true. No surprise, though, President Trump's already out saying she's lying. I hardly know who this person is. He wrote on True Social when she requested to go with certain others of the team to Florida after my having served a full term in office. I personally turned her request down. She was very upset and angry. Trump's casual relationship with the truth speaks for itself, but the committee knows the truth, or at least has a lot more evidence about it. One way or the other, they aren't telling us. Thus, right now, Hutchinson's story is akin to something she overheard at work. Actually, it's not akin to that. It is actually something she overheard at work. That's on point tonight. Emily Jashinsky is here of the Federal. Thanks for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to subscribe. Click the red button to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.